I can't imagine taking the black pill. I'm certain that many guys in their life have had a moment of deep-seated existentialism, a moment in which someone experiences an ingrained feeling of dread that the world they're living in is absurdly beyond their control. A moment where they ask the world, why? Why is life so hard? Why is life so unfair? Many guys tend to blame it on a multitude of reasons as to why, some of which can be valid reasons to feel a certain way, and some of which aren't. Maybe their mother died, maybe they're in a far less than favorable financial situation. However, some guys seem to have an invalid reason for feeling this dread, and an example of this would be that they're cringe and self fucks who bear no level of value to the world as we know it. They probably dwell on the manosphere side of the internet, and take advice from socially inept pickup artists who have likely had the same amount of contact with women as the losers who take their advice in the first place. And the same question likely plays in their heads 24-7, 365, until they're dead. Why don't women like me? Now I realize that I just threw a lot of hefty claims and loaded terminology, some of which you might not be too familiar with. Incel, black-pilled, manosphere. I mean, I'm sure anyone who spent time on the internet is familiar with the term incel, but black-pilled manosphere? Maybe not so much. So allow me to preface this video with a brief explanation to set the stage. Women just don't want me, man. Women just don't want me. No amount of self-improvement will make a woman like you. Once women have labeled you and stereotyped you out, nothing you do will draw a woman to you. If I ask a woman out, you know what she gonna do? She gonna reject me, make me like a fool. Yeah, you right, I am a reject. No race of women want me, man. I've tried it. Incels are commonplace among the modern world we know today, but not necessarily in the way that you think. It's a bit more convoluted than you're led to believe. What I mean by that is, it's unlikely you'll run into one at your local coffee shop, less so that they'd even show any of their qualities openly in the public eye. But let's take a second to identify the common characteristics these individuals tend to harbor. They often have overbearing confidence to hide their insecurities. They're very accusatory of women being the sole problem of a poor dating life. In conversations, they're very robotic and one-dimensional, with absolutely no natural charisma to their name. They're very ugly with high standards, and they view women as objects to curb stomp their cooch at the snap of a finger. The truth is that these people scamper everywhere on the internet, and the more you tend to look for them, the easier it'll be to find them. They're quite frankly a mere search away on any platform. Twitter, Instagram, 4chan, and even one-off websites. People with this level of social ineptitude are part of the larger manosphere, which is known as the collection of websites and online forums that cultivate pickup artists, men going their own way, and of course, incels. Now 10% of these websites and forums that claim to be part of the manosphere are satirical and pretty funny memes, but the remaining 90% are genuine people that exist in this universe, on Earth, and breathe the same air as you do. I hope that makes you feel better about your existence. And that's why I'll be taking the time to take a peek into the curtain for a second, to look into the world of the manosphere. Ladies and gentlemen, today, I'll be taking the black pill. Incel forums run rampant all over the internet, and it's actually almost impossible for you not to stumble across one at one point in your life. But it actually takes a bit of introspection to see the genuineness this type of content on the internet has, since the unspoken rule online is to not take everything on the internet seriously. But that isn't to say that one of these might not break the seal of satire, and even ones that claim to be under the curtain of irony are so dedicated to the incel craft that they might as well be the real deal. Twitter's infestation is the mere tip of the iceberg with the manosphere, so much so that many popular YouTubers have already taken it upon themselves to dip their toe into the pool of this type of media. I actually noticed this myself one time when I was scrolling through Twitter, and it was so very cringy to see the amount of overweight hyenas in the replies drooling at the mouth to these likely catfished photos of women. You see me sitting alone at your local cafe. What's your opening line? Hi, how's the coffee? just for starters. I'm learning about important dates in history. Wanna be one of them? Hope you're having a fabulous day and keep walking. Macchiato or cappuccino? So yummy. 
nothing unless you smile and wave me over. I'm no creeper. Just have to tell you how lovely you look. This old man would just smile and respect the woman enjoying peace and quiet. If she smiles back though, then I don't need a line. I do not have the confidence to say a word to you. Please pass the sugar. No, I mean you. Sweet smile. Hey, let me buy you a coffee. Keep it simple. My line would be, have you met a real man yet? Come and sit on my face and let me guess your weight. Oh. Never mind. <clears throat> uh. Need to change my underwear. Post nut clarity always brings you back to your senses. Online interactions are a night and day difference compared to real life interactions, and it's reasonably easy to understand why. The internet allows you to express yourself however you feel, with very minimal levels of repercussions that would come your way, almost the exact opposite of what would happen in real life. For example, if you were to call this person retarded in real life, you'd get slam dunked, not only by the person you're saying it to, but also potentially other individuals nearby as well. However, if you were to say the exact same thing to someone online, the court of public opinion switches entirely to the other side, and people would probably even join in as well. And that's actually... fine. The last thing I would want is for the internet to be under the same level of societal standards as would be in real life, since it would hold a scary precedent for what we could and could not say online. But that isn't to say that there aren't any flaws within the system, and it's with these exact flaws that people take advantage of how they would normally conduct themselves. Some people have a pretty consistent form of conduct both online and offline, and that's exactly how pickup artists are born, with their unruly confidence seeping into the pores of the real world. You see, a guy commenting on the internet would probably pull some corny one-liner about meeting a woman in a past life, but a pickup artist would actually have the balls to say that dumb shit in person as well. Howdy. What you studying? Ugh, my balls are really hard right now. You should put them in your mouth to make them a little bit softer. <laughs> um, a test. Oh, for Which one? Oh, I can't hear you. Maybe from another life. <laughs> it's actually pretty interesting to see the relationship between pickup artists and incels because they honestly go hand in hand with each other. The incel looks for the most one-dimensional forms of conversation that would only work in their own personal rom-com, and the pickup artist provides, sometimes through a payment, and sometimes they bless the earth with their life-saving advice for free. Many of these websites offer up a hefty claim like, hey, I can free you of your social anxiety you have when approaching women, but make sure to buy my book first and you'll fuck any bitch you want, buddy. Take for example Eric Weaver's world famous How to Pick Up Girls. The world's greatest pickup book has just gotten better. So effective some say, it should be declared illegal. Declared illegal. Whoa. The new How to Pick Up Girls has anticipated everything a guy will need to succeed. From the most brilliantly disarming pickup lines to long term strategies for getting the best looking women to fall in love with you. Yes, you, you ugly fuck. Ugly piece of shit. You ugly fuck. Whoa. You should really kill yourself. You're ugly. No ho will ever want to approach you. Just jump off the bridge. Jump off the bridge. You see that bridge there? Jump off it. Whoa. 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 Limited time off. Not available in stores. Beware of containers. Spark is not responsible for any side effects that could be caused. Sign may include heart attack, stroke, and death. Use caution. Kill yourself. It's actually quite surprising, because if you take a quick ponder at the reviews, you can see people praising the wonderful advice- I don't know what you expected, honestly. It might as well be a book for the mentally handicapped. But even then, it's not the worst thing out there. In fact, Mantelligence is another gem I found. And it's a site that claims to specialize in teaching men how to get the women of their dreams by simply following their tips and tricks they've learned along the way. The article that caught my attention was one titled, How to Get a Girlfriend. 20 Simple Steps to Finally Get the Girl, and it featured some of the most obvious black and white steps you could possibly imagine, ranging from knowing how to initiate conversation to knowing what to text a girl. Each step of the way, this article holds your hand through some of the most basic forms of human interaction possible. Just listen, respond, make observations, and be prepared to change the subject if the conversation is running dry. Yeah, you know, kind of like any conversation, ever. If you need someone to baby you on the basics of conversation, this website is not for you. 
and your problems run far deeper than you think. I think the conclusion sums it up pretty nicely. You know, wraps it up in a pretty little bow. It can seem like a lot to take in at once, but once you take a bit of time to follow all of the above steps, you'll have solved every question you have about how to get a girlfriend. It's almost hard to believe, but the truth is that the trick when you want to get the girl is really just knowing how to follow a simple set of rules. Why do they make it sound so stupid? They make it sound like a big test in how to not be socially retarded. All right, everyone, this is your first day of Black Pill 101. Now get your textbooks out and turn to page 23. But before we start, any questions? Oh my god, they're retarded. Tip three, make her laugh. Feel like things aren't clicking yet? Get her giggling and she'll be eager to keep the conversation going. What's the next tip, huh? How to breathe? How to walk, maybe? How to sit down while taking a shit? Huh? What's next? But websites like this aren't even that bad. Well, yes, it's really, really cringy. All it really is is a guy trying to help some hopeless schmuck get a girlfriend. And if the advice makes him more open to touching some grass, then you know what? That's great. But that's because we're only on the surface of the manosphere. So let's nosedive into the realm of MGTOW. Men going their own way is a subsection of the manosphere which seems to delve into a concept far beyond simply self-loathing. As explained by numerous people, even within the MGTOW communities themselves, the movement stands to give a realistic outlook towards men about how women truly are. However, when turned on its head, the purpose of this movement becomes very clear. MGTOW seeks to brainwash men into believing that society has dealt them a bad hand and that any form of a positive relationship with the woman is virtually impossible. Now, of course, given this information, it's easy to see the primary demographic of people who seek refuge in these communities, men's rights activists, degenerates, and incels. Specific forums that tend to dabble in these types of communities often cite incredibly biased articles and personal anecdotes of their very warped perspectives of reality and hold them as a basis for their strange ideological viewpoints. MGTOW is the true black pill. For example, while both incels and MGTOW see women as the causation for many societal and economical inequalities within the world, many incels still seek social and sexual approval of women. MGTOW don't. To put it bluntly, they see women as a hindrance on the male sex and see no reasonable value in maintaining a relationship with any woman on the planet. They view women as entitled, self-absorbed creatures who have no providability without men in their beck and call and oftentimes rely on sexist stereotypes to formulate many of their unsubstantiated claims. Relationships with today's women, under today's conditions, are not worth it. Relationships have always taken up huge amounts of time and money, but now they cost more. Legal liability, alimony, and child support. How many guys do you know who have been through the ringer? Women can't keep house, can't raise a family, are self-centered and entitled. Sure, today's women make a living, but so what? So do I. Sure, they're strong and independent. How is that a benefit to a long-term relationship? Today's women don't know how to be a wife, and wouldn't do it even if she did. The only thing, the soul, single, only wants, or can realistically get from today's women, sex. Buying the cow is a worse deal now than it ever was. This was just one of the many posts I've seen on many Manosphere forums. And the opinions and claims this post made are mirrored everywhere you look. Over the years, women have become more entitled in their attitude that they are no longer worth the hassle of dealing with them. So MGTOWs have simply moved on to other pursuits that offer more value to their plan and effort. This is not unlike the local store, gas station, or restaurant that slowly raise their prices so that they are no longer competitive with other places that offer more value. Needy girlfriend, or that new scuba gear, it's not so Weekend at her friend's wedding, or a fishing trip with her buddy. These communities attempt to disguise themselves as a way of getting unlucky men into self improvement, but their definition of self improvement is blocking out all women entirely. Liberal media is a big no no in these communities as well, with many of the members accusing them of unreasonably ostracizing men from society and holding women on an unreasonably high pedestal. This comes from a delusion of victimhood in which these people dwell in. Other posts further add on to this false notion that by virtue of societal standards, men are expected to be the providers, and 
women sit back and enjoy the ride. Women can do no wrong, and men are always at fault. Men are there to be the unfeeling rocks that women use to cry on. It honestly baffles me to see this level of hatred in these communities. And while MGTOW masks themselves as a base of strong men who open their eyes, they swim in a swamp of self-pity from their inability to maintain any form of relationship with women. And this is the ever-growing issue with incels as a whole. Incels identify themselves by their inability to have sex, and the ultimate goal is to find a girl, get laid, and live a happy life. So when one of the members finally find their wings, that leaves the rest with an ever-growing sense of impatience, questioning why they themselves can't reach the same goals they have. This exact question is what gets people to become incels in the first place. So by process of having this drilled into their brains, it pushes them farther and farther down the pit. These communities claim that women have unreasonably high expectations that society feeds into. That women seek to wring out men of all their money. That women have no empathy. And if you were none the wiser, you'd probably think women are the devil. It's frankly such a damaging mindset to view human interaction this way. It's sad. Because by holding this idea that life will never get better unless you block out half of the population on Earth, nothing will ever change. You ever notice how girls who've been ran through or just more attractive girls tend to look at men with a sense of resentment or a sense of pity? Bro, they look at you with a sense of resentment and pity because you are pathetic and creepy. Like, it's not... You make all of these massive generalizations. It's, it's nutty. The things this guy says and the points that he makes are things that you would have read in Elliot Rogers' manifesto. It's dangerous shit to actually fall into this pit where you think women are only here for men's pleasure and they only care about three things. Dick, money, and height. I don't know if he even mentions height. I don't remember in the rest of the video. But he's already talked about how they only care about the biggest dick, the most dick. Whoever has the most money. When you grow up, when you go through your teenage years, especially into your adult years, what you achieve with your life or how you, you know, present yourself is really what you're achieving, right? Like this whole alpha grind set, this whole like beta sigma bullshit that these kind of terminologies derive from. I like to think that anybody who wants to be an alpha or somebody that's beyond the pack, I guess, so do these people claim. It doesn't really require you to be born with anything. If you want to, if you want to be attractive to anybody beyond or, or you want to have any value to the world, you have to earn that value, okay? But these ideas don't come into a person's mind at the snap of a finger. Rather, it takes a horrible slew of personal experiences or an extensive amount of time to properly drill these ideas into the heads of another individual. And this problem is prevalent, not just with MGTOW, but anywhere. By holding on to these personal biases, it warps the perspective of an individual to an unbelievable level and taints any further interactions they may have. In fact, the most these people would ever be willing to interact with a woman is sex whether it be a simple quickie from an escort, or to have one carry their children. In other words, they'd rather have women there as live incubators, so that the human race could live on. But how do these self-entitled women even select their partners in the first place? Allow me to introduce you to social market value, which in layman's terms is what you can bring to the table. It can be simplified down to the common 1 to 10 rating scale that people often give men and women who people are interested in. Having a very low social market value implies that you are very undesirable to a potential partner, both physically and emotionally. Whether it ranges from you being emotionally stunted, having poor fashion sense, and just being objectively ugly. On the other hand, having a very high social market value is the exact opposite. You're very attractive, you have fantastic game, you're very charismatic, and you can basically pull a girl whenever you want. The dumbest way I can put this is basically the alpha and beta male meme which many in the manosphere seem to unironically use to evaluate themselves. There's a chart I've seen used called the Holy Trinity, which uses your looks, height, and race as a way to evaluate if a woman would desire you. The channel I saw coin this chart is called Incel TV, and they say that if you're white, tall, and handsome, you have the highest chance of pulling whichever girl you please. Anybody else is fucked, and not in the good way. At this point of the video, I want to stop it for a second and talk about what I call the whole eternity of virginity. You can also call it the incel bingo. Ugly face, short, and ethnic. This is the whole eternity of virginity. Take this guy for example. He's ugly. He's also quite short, shorter than the woman. And it is fucking over. He's ethnic. He hit the incel bingo. It's actually very clever what these people do to pull on the reader. Because what they do is say a vaguely true general statement that it lies to further build upon a narrative. For example, women are physically weaker than men. 
Okay, that's a pretty fair statement. I'm sure most people would agree with it. But instead of stopping it there, they use that true statement as a way of qualifying the lie. Because women are physically weaker than men, they compensate for it by using emotional manipulation. This deceptive use of rhetoric is one of the many ways the anti-woman arguments are further pushed, and the agreeable lead-ins are a way to appeal to a broader audience as a way to start radicalizing them. Women are Machiavellian in nature. This means they are comparatively proficient at being manipulative versus the typical male. The evolutionary theoretical basis for this is due to smaller size and inferior musculature. Women had to learn to use men as tools rather than directly impose them in a physical conflict. This would have undoubtedly avoided all the very few scenarios. This makes the propensity for domestic work the propensity to be mentally violent rather than be physically violent. Physical violence is outlawed, whereas mental abuse is not. This allows women to get their way without being held accountable by a system of law. The law does not legislate interpersonal morality to this extent. Where a man's instinct is to hit, a woman's is to do a big shit in your mind and spit it at it. We also put an emphasis on the concept of logic versus emotion, and claim that women are inherently irrational, and therefore make decisions solely based on their emotional status. Women are irrational and inconsistent. They have the capacity for logic, but it is not their motor shape alone. That is to say that they must exert effort to be logical, as it is not their factory setting. The logical woman is easily baited into becoming emotional. Women are easy to compromise. Their decisions are based on their current emotional state rather than the abstraction of logic. It's this proclivity to change so quickly, which causes them to act inconsistent and in contradiction. These claims of women making emotionally compromised decisions extend so far that these communities perceive women to use the law to further hinder men. The law is no perfect system, and the courts being predominantly tilted against men is a statement that's hard to deny in certain scenarios, especially regarding family court issues and custody cases where it could be argued that the mother has more favorable odds of winning custody of the children rather than the father. However, to lump all women as these masterminds with the ability to harness the judicial system as a weapon is a massive blanket statement and quite frankly contradicts previous statements these people have made. How can a woman be so emotionally immature, yet smart enough to win a custody dispute in court? It's all a fallacy that only serves to perpetuate fear-mongering among young men. And that's what this community is trying to reach young men. The older men have already seen the extent of what this movement has to offer, since they're the ones who primarily steal men all of these flimsy arguments. And to fearmonger to this level creates an environment of toxicity and paranoia that is very hard to shake off once you're caught in the web. We make fun of women who make bold statements about men after having one bad breakup, but for some reason hold a weird double standard when the shoe is on the other foot. There have been stories out there of people who have followed these movements to the depths of the earth, Stories of people who got caught in these forums and have been brainwashed reading post after post after post. And all the people who escaped described it as a cult-like ideology. Some even go as far as to call it a religion of sorts. And it's not hard to see why. How many of you have fed into a lie before? Maybe you've believed some rumor or story out there that wasn't true and ran with it. Whether it be small or large, I'm sure everyone has done it at some point in their life. Repetition is the key for making something appear true, and if you repeat a lie long enough, you might just start to believe it. Thank you. 